Good morning. It's morning here uh, from where we where we are. I'm likely going to uh, add some music to uh, what I'm doing in regard to these shows and uh, these podcasts that we are doing to just add a level of variety and everything to all of this to become even better at it. Um, is 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 something that I actually enjoy doing. Uh, I pray that as you listen to this, that it's informative, educational, empowering. Uh, my real intent is that it would be enlightening and empowering to you. As I've said previously, this item of the inner journey of self-awareness to become one's authentic self uh, has been empowering for me. And as I have um, had an experience on last evening, uh, wherein there was an individual that uh, I met. I was at a store, and that particular individual um, um, actually was a person who uh, spoke to me first. Um, I have a habit from time to time of actually speaking to individuals first, and but this time, this individual actually spoke to me first. Um, and he was speaking to me and asked me uh, a technical question. I guess it was technical uh, from my standpoint. Uh, I was picking out a particular uh, piece of uh, furniture or equipment, depending on how you look at it, and he asked me about uh, this particular item as to why, I guess, I picked it out. And... My reason for picking the item out was totally different from the reason that he had. I assume that the item, just based on what it was, um, uh, which was a, a, a heater, a, a electric heater, as they call it, and I, I assume that uh, that item uh, would accomplish what was said about it by virtue of the fact that it was being sold. Um, I live in a pretty um, uh, large house. Uh, it has a number of rooms, and there are times when I'm working uh, in a small part of the house. And in wintertime, um, rather than heat the entire house, uh, because I'm the person who is here in the office and working, that is more economical, if you will, just makes more sense to heat only a small portion of the house. And so I was getting a heater to do that, electric heater. And he was asking me about the wattage of the um, unit and whether or not one that was listed for the same wattage was better than another. And I told him I, I picked the heater out because it would look good. And then as we talked, he was telling me that he was looking for the same heater, um, uh, same type of heater, and he was concerned about uh, whether or not it would, I guess, produce the level of heat um, that he had in mind. And of course, I had no idea um, as to um, whether one would do better than the other based on the explanation that he was given. Um, and, I, and so we had that particular conversation. But then, after that conversation, we began to talk about those things that prompted him, that prompted him behind the initial conversation, there's another conversation. And by virtue of that conversation, that was interesting because I learned of his journey. He had grown up in a particular set of circumstances, particular set of circumstances, that set of circumstances, as I learned, uh, he was an African-American male, had been raised by an um, um, African-American female, and then he had also his father, um, he had known only uh, through the aspect of um, that individual um, conversing with him, I'll, I'll just leave that out, um, in a different way than usually a father being in the home. And then as we talked, he mentioned, and this is the part that is so um, powerful, he mentioned that early in his life, 
he made specific decisions that he wanted his life to be different than what it was that it portended to. Early in his life, he looked at his circumstances, his situations, his, where his mother was, where his father was, his community. He looked at that and he made some decisions. He made some choices about what he wanted his life to be. And as he continues to talk, he informed me that the reason he was looking for a heater was really for his daughter because his daughter was doing schoolwork at what we call a historically black college and university and that she was out of school for a period of time and she was engaging in, and he used the word, an entrepreneurial pursuit. And he wanted to make it as uh, possible, as easy for her to do that. He wanted to aid her in her pursuit. In addition to going to school, she was doing something that generated income for her. And he wanted to assist her in the doing of that. So not only had he transcended a particular set of circumstances by virtue of his decision, but he also wanted to make sure that his next generation was able also not just to be an hourly worker, so to speak. He wanted to make sure that this younger person, his next generation, also was able to pursue their desires. And that's part of what I believe, again, is this aspect of the uh, hero's journey, this entire process. And so we talked. It had to be, had to be for an hour, had to be for an hour. As we talked some more, he began to talk again about what he did. And he stretched it even further when he said that he, every, he had decided a few years ago that between him and his immediate family, they would go into the midst of the inner city of Washington, D.C., where he had been born, and that they would give out food to those who were homeless in the city of Washington, D.C., um, in the capital there. And they would give out food, and initially... Uh, they had a very small amount of people that either helped them or that they gave food out to, but that this year, uh, 2019, 2019, they were able to actually uh, assist, um, I think he said 300 individuals. And he was telling me about that. At the moment that he told me about that, what I did was I called my son, my son, Dennis Jr., uh, there's, there's there's a number of Dennis's. There's a whole story in it in itself. There's a Dennis the Third, um, uh, Dennis L. Waters the uh, Third. That's Jr.'s son. But I call my son Dennis Junior. Um, and when I spoke with Dennis Junior about what he was doing, because Dennis Junior is saying that this Christmas, 2019, that his desire is to actually do a similar type thing in which he's going to, between himself and his wife, uh, Tamika, that they're going to set up a uh, place in the city of Frederick. I, he, he may get at me because of the aspect that I say this, but he's going to set up a, um, uh, a, a, a situation where in the city of Frederick, Maryland, that he's going to actually also benefit individuals. So they have a specific idea as to what they have in mind that they want to do, and they're going to carry that out. And they haven't broadcast it to everybody. They haven't put it on like social media or anything like that, other than my saying this and the individuals who may listen to this at this time, that they, they are the person that know that. But JR, as we call him, um, who's a, a, a larger man, much larger than I am. He's six foot five. My great grandfather, our, our great, uh, great grandfather. 
was seven foot tall. His name was Sam Waters. He was, so J.R. has got the height of Waters's, if you will. Um, and so this whole idea that he's going to be involved um, in this community and, and that he's going to um, bring forth these things that help the homeless individuals. He's indicated that he wanted to do that. Him and his wife are going to do that. Him and his wife and his children are going to do that. And so that it, being blessed already, they're ready to reach out and do more. And so I called my son to let him speak to this young man that I was speaking with because I wanted to celebrate uh, these two young African-American males, if you will, who are already doing positive things in the raising of their families, already doing positive things. And then also, they are also involved in their community. They are reaching out and helping people up to do things in life, to be, to actually touch them in such a way to say that there is something divine within those individuals, that there is someone who desires to benefit and to bless them. All of those. And I entitled this particular uh, presentation, Change Point. Change Point. Change Point. Because what the young man told me last night, and I call him a young man because I'm a particular age, he was a particular age, and he's younger than I am. And he is a change point in his life when he makes that decision. A change point. And as I said before, there are so many ways that a person can arrive at a change point. It's really a point where you make a decision about your life. That decision could be prompted by, it could be prompted by something that is a point of prosperity, just sudden prosperity that happens in your life. Some great blessing that happens in your life. That could move you to the point where you look at life and recognize that there's something immensely bigger than what you are, what you have thought that life is. And as a result of that, you begin to see things differently than you had previously seen things. On the one hand, as I've said, I call it awareness in my eight A's, where I talk about awareness, acceptance, and then there is assurance, and then there follows what I call adoration, which is really living in imaginal space, or liminal space. It's, it's where you think of the possibilities of where you can go from where you are to where you desire to go. You get a vision for an uh, uh, entirely new life. Uh, but and then there are four more that follow that actually. Uh, but beyond that, there is what they call the hero's journey, and the hero's journey they call this inflection point. They call it the call to adventure. In the movie Star Wars that's coming out, you know, the next one that's coming out. In the original one, it is when Luke Skywalker has a call to adventure where Obi-Wan says, you should come with me so that we can go and fight the, uh, the Empire. And initially, there is the refusal of the call. There's a refusal of the call where Luke Skywalker says, you know, I'm not a Jedi. I, I can't do that. I've got to go work on the farm of my uncle. That's the refusal. Remember that I had awareness. Awareness is the same thing as the call. And then I had as my second step acceptance. Well, they have refusal. Refusal is what you do first. And then acceptance is what you do next. You must accept the call. It's a decision. It's an inflection point. It's when you look at your circumstances. And with Luke Skywalker, of course, that's when he goes home to the farm and he sees that his aunt and his uncle and the farm itself have been destroyed. And so with the young man that I was speaking about, what happens with him is that he looks at his circumstance and he makes a decision. I want my life to be different. He does not know how that life is going to be different. But this is so many years later where we're having a conversation and his life is definitely different. Definitely different than what it would have been if he just left it 
alone without making that decision. He becomes an agent of change just by that decision. Just by that decision. In the hero's journey, what takes place there is that after you make that decision, you discover that there are mentors or guardians and others who come and they show up and help you. Now, what's interesting, as I said, is that this person spoke to me. And the more we talked, I was trying to understand how did we, the young man and I, get to be at the same place at the same time and having this decision, this discussion? How did we get there? Because if you look over the, uh, the many events that could have taken place, the likelihood of any two people being in the same place at the same time to have the depth of conversation that we were having, highly unlikely, if you look at it from a certain perspective. It's just like the likelihood of you actually listening to this particular program, highly unlikely, highly unlikely. There has to be some divine operation going on with this young man. No question about it from my perspective. Now, there are things that they call conversions and synchronicity that is involved here. It is like the spirit Spurn and the zygote getting together to produce you as an individual. Uh, we call these things divine appointments that are set up by a power greater than we are. But that we are because in God we live and move and have our being and God is in us. All of these things that there is something going on beyond what we are normally able to see. And just the recognition of that, the acknowledgement of that, is part of this matter of self-awareness. That there's order in the universe. There's order in the universe. And for this young man that I met, there was this aspect of him talking about the help that his mother gave him and even the help that his father gave him, though his father seemingly would have been out of his life. And then his grandparents gave him. And then his uncles gave him. And how even after things seemingly did not work out the way that he thought they would have worked out, they still worked out the way that he thought they would work out. That thing that says far more abundantly above anything that you might ask or think, you know, that when you are doing the hero's journey, it's rare, rare that after you meet the mentors and uh, you get the special weapon and you do the initial training, it's rare that the hero goes out or the shero goes out and fights the first battle and wins. And even if they put that in the movies, it's rare in life. I mean, there's no just straight to the moon or uh, like living happily ever after that I've become aware of as far as life that you just get it right the first time. I I don't know of such. I, I've never heard of such. I never have. There are some people who are upset because of the aspect that it did not happen in their life as such. I know individuals who have been upset. I know a person who went to Africa and when he was in Africa, there was a set of circumstances that he was working with or his group was working with. And they had hope that they would be able to help more and more and more people. And they said as much while they were there. But when they came back to the United States 
and sought to bring about what they had initially intended. They found such disarray, discord, I mean, just were not able to follow through and to bring to pass what they had intended. There were so many things that occurred, so many things that occurred. But the there were some young people in Africa that they had hoped to help that they were not able to help. And it's only years later, if you can imagine this, that they learned that the young people there in Africa, at least one of them, blamed them for not helping him, not helping him. And as a result of that, he said that he went through a great deal of pain and that no one really knew what the pain was and the disappointment that he went through as a result of hoping. And now get this, as a result of hoping for a change. Now he eventually gets more in life than he would have had in my He would have had if he had not hoped. But he eventually gets that, not immediately. He attains a greater position That's amazing. That's amazing. Because the the real thing is, is that there is a matter of a divine power that is really at work in what is taking place here. There is a divine power. There is a divine power that is at work in what is taking place here. There is a divine power. And so the hero goes out, or the sheroes goes out, and they fight the first battle, and they don't win. As a matter of fact, in the stories, they get killed. Or something happens, and they are maimed very deeply. They are maimed, they are hurt. In the movie The Black Panther, you remember that T'Challa, there's a period of time where he is fighting. And in one time, he actually wins the fight to become the king of Wakanda. He wins the fight. But in the next time when he fights, he goes over the cliff. And it looks like he is dead. And he is so close to death is the way they tell the story that the end of, uh, Mabuku, I think is the name, uh, ends up putting him in a state where he is frozen. He is dead like, which is the same thing that happens to Han Solo in Star Wars. But he's frozen on the ice and all of that, barely alive in a coma-like state. He has lost that battle. And that's what happens and subconsciously is what is taking place is that some things are being worked out on a subconscious level inside of the individual. That's the part that you cannot see unless you are the individual. Some things are being worked out on the subconscious level in regard to that individual. And with T'Challa, You see that there are many times where he goes into the the space, the liminal space again, where he is talking with his father and his ancestors. And he has these communications with them where he talks about the past and their past and the decisions they're made and under what conditions they made those conditions. And he is able to say, this is something that people do not really grasp and understand. And one of the reasons why we're talking about this now today is that no matter what the religious, remember that T'Challa is a prophet, a priest, and a king. He is like David in the Bible. He is all of those things. He is a spiritual leader. He is a warrior. 
He's a prophet, a priest, a king. He's all of that. His father was the same thing. But he goes and he says to his father, who was a previous prophet, priest, and king, he says, you were wrong. You made a decision and you should not have left that boy in America. You were wrong. It's like a belief that you have, and your parents have had, and your grandparents have had, and your great-grandparents have had, and you recognize in your time, in this time, it has not served you well. And you go into the subconscious, and you've been living by that, but now you recognize it is not serving you well. And you say to the ancestors, you were wrong. You did that for a period of time, but you were wrong. It does not work now for us. You can only do that when you're self-aware. That's what this journey is about. That's what this journey is about. That's what this journey is about. They keep telling stories because really, how do you tell a person directly that If you keep doing the same thing over and over again, and it keeps giving you the same result, well, to keep doing that, that's insanity. However, if you have in mind that your distant ancestor did it, and they were one person, and then the next ancestor coming forward did it, and they were another person, And then the next ancestor did it, and they were considered another person, and they did it, and they were another person. And you keep on moving forward, and you think that each one of those are different individuals without recognizing that all of them are one self. All of them are in you. That's the journey. All of them are in you. And it's based on your decision as you look back and you look forward. And that's what this young man said last night. An inflection point where he changed the entire course of his entire family. A clear inflection point. He saw something different. Now, let me tell you another program that is like that. That's the program called Mulan. Mulan, whether you recognize it, look at it, whatever you may be, in regard to it, Mulan is the same thing. What did she change? Well, all of a sudden, a girl, a woman, gets to be a warrior to wear the armor, and she does it in disguise and proves that she can fight for the honor of her father and the honor of the nation, the honor of China. Inflection point. All of these things Wakanda, the idea now, think of this idea, the excellence of Africa. Not backwards, forward thinking, advanced thinking. I mean, after all, it is the home of pyramids. And so the battle, there's a resurrection after. Again, this is the hero's journey. And this was what this young man spoke to me about as he's talking about moving to the next level and his daughter moving to the next level. And they'll keep on moving to the next level. And so I, of course, invited him to take the hero's journey knowingly understanding the steps because with knowledge you can advance faster if you will a more intentional if you will 
in regard. That's what the teaching is about. I mean, you can get there by experience because, again, this is my father's world. This this is by divine design. But we are more than just animals. We're more than just animals that are doing stuff by instinct. God has made it possible for us to be conscious. And with consciousness comes choices. And with choices comes change. I invite you again to email me at info at I will restore.com in for it. I will restore.com. We've got some classes for you. And what we want to do is really make the classes available. I've thought about doing something at like $5 a month for individuals who would like to do the uh, inner journey of self-awareness to become your authentic self. And so we are working that out to get that available to you. And, and you will just get a tremendous amount of material so that you can discover your values, you can discover your beliefs, you can discover your passions, you can discover the principles that you choose to live by. What are your gifts? What do you do? How does it work? So that you have a deep, rich understanding of who you are and why you are so that you can stand in your power. This would be a tremendous gift for you to give yourself in 2020 so that you indeed will have 2020 vision as you go forward about you, the vision that spirit has for you. This is what this journey is about. This is really what this journey is about so that you can know for certain that God is in you. God is working through you. God is working as you. This is not just something that is being said. This has been said all the way down through time. God breathed in Adam, according to the Genesis story, the breath of life and man, woman became living souls. That's, 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 that's there. Never is that breath taken away. Never. The poet said, God is closer to us than breathing, nearer than hands and feet. And sometimes we may forget, as a matter of fact, there are a lot of times that we're not even told that we are sons and daughters of God. Unless we do something good, like that story about Santa Claus, you know, he knows when you've been good or bad, so be good for goodness sake. Well, spirit loves us whether we're good or bad, whatever that might be. The Bible says that God has eyes that don't even see evil. You need to know that. I know I needed to know that, and I need to remind myself every day of that. My circumstances do not determine my beingness, neither does yours. And that's what I said to the young man last night. Circumstances of life don't determine who you are. And he discovered that, and he's telling his children that. Imagine what a difference that'll make in their lives. Imagine that for the next generation, and the next generation, and the next generation, and the next generation, and on. And so, again, change point. It could be today. It could be the next day. For the next generation, change point. Blessings to you. Take care.